Good morning, everybody. That was really fun. It's, it's all about the beef and it's all about the carrot, apparently, at this conference <laughs> last couple of days. So this was a great exercise to lead into our next uh, narrative interlude. I'd like to um, introduce Haile Johnston and Tatiana Granados, um, the board chair and executive director consecutively of Common Market Philadelphia. Please come up. Uh, Common Market was developed in response to an overwhelming health disparities in their community, um, which is named Strawberry Mission in Philadelphia. Through their work with Common Market, when you're going to see a brief film about it, and then they're going to answer a couple of questions. Um, they've been able to establish relationships between regional farmers in South Jersey and in Pennsylvania, and schools and hospitals and other institutions who are looking to purchase more regional, more flavorful, more delicious local food for those uh, for the meals that they prepare and serve. Currently, Common Market serves about 100 individual schools in southeastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And in addition to running Common Market, Haile and Tatiana are the founders of a community-based nonprofit called the East Park Revitalization Alliance, which focuses on resources on educating children about the transformative qualities of nutrition, physical activity, and environmental enhancement. And we're really happy to have you both here with us today Thank you. Do you want to just introduce the film and then we'll look, take a look at it? Well, actually, I was going to start by uh, sharing a little bit about our, our path and our organization. Again, I'm Haile Johnston, and this is Tatiana Granados, and we are two of the founders of The Common Market. We are a nonprofit local food distribution company that serves and connects small family farms to communities and the institutions that serve them. And we were founded on uh, you know, some very basic ideas. And that is that access to good, affordable food is a fundamental human right, and that the people who grow our food deserve to be paid and treated fairly. And that these two ideas need not be mutually exclusive. So again, I, I'd like to share a little bit about our path and uh, how Common Market came to be, and um, a, little, a little bit of uh, a video that we've begun to produce to share our story more, more broadly. And uh, it was about nine years ago or so, uh, Tatiana and I uh, began to pursue the American dream. Uh, we wanted to buy a home in a community where we could raise uh, our future family. Uh, and we, we were able to afford a house in um, the neighborhood of Strawberry Mansion, which is a, a wonderfully historic and culturally rich uh, and, um, and just a beautiful community alongside Fairmount Park in Philadelphia. And uh, despite its incredibly evocative name, uh, <laughs> Strawberry Mansion faces a lot of challenges. Uh, they're, they're, you know, we suffer from the decline of industry uh, in Philadelphia, departure of a lot of our population, and our community suffers from blight and abandonment, a lot of vacant houses, um, a lot of vacant land. Uh, so uh, true to our nature, we decided that if we were actually going to raise our children in this community, we wanted to make it a better place. So we set about doing the little things. Uh, beautifying vacant land, planting trees. Uh, we actually converted over 14 acres of, of non-contiguous vacant property into safe play space and community gardens for children. We planted orchards and had a lot of success. Um, but uh, our, our community was not healed. And the more work we did in our neighborhood, the more we became aware of the, of the health disparities, the glaring health disparities that our community suffers from. And uh, true to our nature, had to do something about it. Uh, so we, we knew that this is something we couldn't solve alone, and so we engaged people from outside of our community. First, we uh, engaged a gentleman by the name of Bob Pearson, who runs Farm to City, a uh, true visionary in Philadelphia. He, uh, he operates the, many of the farmers' markets and winter buying clubs. Um, and um, you know, through conversations with him and other partners, a couple themes emerged. And one was that uh, on one side, you literally had communities that were dying because they could not access good food. Uh, and on the other side, you had farm communities that were in decline, facing pressures of uh, development, um, largely because they couldn't get the good food that they were growing into the market at a price that was fair. Um, and we saw the opportunity to play the role to actually bridge these two communities and, and create a degree of uh, self-reliance um, between the two. And uh, so uh, this, this is where the common market was born. It was from this energy, from our community, from other partners. Um, and this realization that it wasn't just communities like ours that couldn't access good food. It was the hospitals, it was the schools, it was the universities, it was the elder care facilities, it was, it was even retail that couldn't get uh, the good food um, into the market. So 
Common Market was born to, uh, to, to bridge these communities and, and create this access. So with that, I'd like to share a video, which is the beginning of um, uh, our effort to share our story more, more broadly. I believe our food system is broken. It's as broken as many of the other systems in our society. Healthcare, education, energy and transportation. It's a system that's broken and needs to be repaired. It's not working well for everybody. A lot of families that don't have access to the healthy food they need, and there are a lot of ways where our food system is not protecting the environment the way it should. My name is Dawn Busby, and the name of our farm is A.T. Busby Farm. We are blessed with uh, natural resources, good soil, things that can grow. When you put houses on it, it's gone forever. You know, if you develop it into shopping malls or houses or whatever, you know, you can't go back to farming it. It's vital for our food supply in the future and for future generations to keep ground open and to keep it available for our food supply. There are three basic things we need to do to repair our food system. One is to increase the demand for healthy, fresh, locally, sustainably grown food. And the other is to increase the supply. And sitting right there in the middle is the need for rebuilding our regional food infrastructure to get the supply to that demand that we know is increasing. I have been involved in some uh, group meetings with some chefs from Philadelphia, trying to figure out a way on how to connect local farmers with institutions and schools. And it was real logistical problem because, you know, we only grow certain things, other farmers grow certain things, and you can't have 10 different people coming to your business or your institution with a couple boxes of this and a couple boxes of that. There are many food hubs that have been developed that are primarily serving higher income, wealthier communities with good food. Nothing wrong with that. But it's a unique role that the common market has to play, connecting local agriculture, local sustainable products with those who are most vulnerable, who most need that kind of food, which are our lower income families and communities. It's one thing to think about not having access to healthy food, but it's really at a deeper level when we start to consider how many of us have lost the direct connection with our food. We really don't know where our food is coming from. We don't know how it was grown. It kind of comes to us somehow as if by magic in a grocery store, a supermarket, or by some other venue. Let's face it, we're all creatures of habit and what you get used to eating is what you want to eat. I mean, schools have the reputation of not having the most nutritious lunches. Things are just been prepackaged and convenient, and a lot of the schools are really grabbing hold of this idea and trying to train children from a young age to eat nutritious, fresh food. What the common market and projects like it help us do is help us make a reconnection, help us reconnect to the source of our food, the, the, literally the source of our sustenance in life. I would hope that 10 years from now we will look back and we will see the common market as having been a model for the way our regional food infrastructure can get recreated, rebuilt. So it's, it's such an honor to be here today and to be able to share our story. Um, as Karen mentioned, we are growing really fast. We, are in our, we just finished our third year of operations. And in that year, we, or actually in this year, we are kind of on course to sell about a million dollars worth of product. And this is, we're working with 100 farms um, in South Jersey and Pennsylvania. And we really see that our role is to connect the eaters to those who grew their food and to reestablish that relationship to really cr tell the story of the farm, of the way that the food was grown. Um, we're working with about 100 schools and doing the farm to school distribution for them. And half of these, we're really proud to say, are public schools. Um, we, we created the common market really to, to create the access to the institutions that wouldn't otherwise have the access to this food. Um, and as, you know, kind of, we, we were talking a lot about the scale of the good food movement and how we move to scale. 
Um, and we see that as, you know, as we're growing, we're having more and more of an impact on our farmers and allowing them to grow too. Um, you met Don Busby in the video, but another one of our farmers is uh, Peckway Valley Yogurt. Uh, it's an Amish family farm in Lancaster County, and we in the past year have become their largest buyer. So, and when they started, they were growing, uh, or they were able to supply all of the, the milk that they needed for their production just from their own cows. But now they're having to go to their neighbor farms and to buy milk from them. And you know, they're seeing that as we're growing and growing, that they're gonna need to invest more in their production, which is just really exciting for us. Um, you know, we also are coming to the conclusion that with that the importance of this movement is to scale, to scale what we're doing in Philadelphia and what other projects like this that are happening all over the country. Um, and so it's it, the topic of the conference is so meaningful. Um, how do we use media to really get our message out? And so it's, it's an honor for us to be able to start to tell our story and to hopefully to inspire others in other parts of the country to be part of this movement and to build the regional food system that we all know we need. Thank you. Thank you.